Welcome to Hartman Math. Today we're going to take a look at the law of sines. Back in chapter 4, we were looking at how to solve a right triangle, meaning to find the missing sides and angles. And we're going to do the same thing here with oblique triangles, and that means it's not a right triangle. So it might be acute, it might be obtuse. So the situations or the cases that we have to deal with are if the three pieces of information that we know are two angles and any side, so that could be angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. Case two, two sides and an angle that's opposite one of them, so a side, side, angle. Case three, we know all three sides but no angles, so side, side, side. And then two sides, but the angle that's between those two sides would be side, angle, side. So today we're going to focus on cases one and two. Those are the ones where we're going to use the law of sines. And the law of sines is a relationship between angles and opposite sides. So it's really a proportion. We wouldn't string together all three of these. We'd really just choose two of these to create a proportion. So it would be like the length of side A divided by the sine of the opposite angle is equal to the length of side B divided by the sine of the opposite angle. So you were to basically choose the one that you know and the one that you're essentially trying to find out. It doesn't matter if it's acute or obtuse. Uh, and you might see some books might have this flipped. It does not really matter at all. Alright, example number one is an angle-angle side. We're given two angles and one side. It says solve the triangle. It's always kind of a good idea to possibly sketch our figure. So we've got uh, angle C, 95.3 degrees, angle B, 32.8 degrees, and then opposite of angle B, that's the one that's 15.8. Those are connected. So something like this. So solve the triangle means find all the missing pieces. We need to find the measure of angle A, side length here, and side length here. So anytime that we're, we know two angles and one side, the first thing we should find is the one missing angle. And that should be pretty easy to do. We're going to use the triangle angle sum theorem that says all three angles add up to 180 degrees. So if we go 180 minus 95.3 minus 32.8. We're going to get our one missing angle and we're going to possibly represent this a little bit differently than you may have learned in like math 2 uh, where we might say little m angle symbol a. Uh, here we're just going to kind of use the model that we've got here. A capital A meaning the measure of angle A is uh, 51.9 so now we're going to use the law of sines to find a uh, missing side. So uh, what we're going to use here is we know the 15.8 and the one opposite. So that's essentially going to be one of our ratios. And if we're trying to find little a, side length a, so we'll say little a over the sine of the opposite angle is equal to the side length that we know divided by the sine of the opposite angle that is also known. And then if we solve for A, we can either cross multiply and solve that way or just multiply both sides by the sine of 51.9 degrees to undo the division. And as an exact value, we get A is equal to 15.8 times the sine of 51.9 degrees divided by the sine of 32.8 degrees. And now to approximate, we're going to go ahead and type that into a calculator make sure that you are in degree mode currently. Uh, so you can go ahead and type that in and then typically uh, with this book we're going to round to two decimal places. So go ahead and pause here see if you can make that calculation. And you get A is about 22.95 and then for the third side we'll do the same process to find C. So little c over the sine of 95.3 degrees. And try to use the exact values. Notice that this one we did say approximate. So it 
If we can avoid using this, we're going to avoid so that we can be as exact as we possibly can. So multiply both sides by the sine of 95.3 degrees. All right, pause here. Go ahead and type that into your calculator. And you get that's about 29.04. We found three missing things, one missing angle, and two missing sides. Example number two, a little application situation. A pole tilts away from the sun at eight degrees angle from the vertical and casts a 20 foot shadow. When the angle of elevation of the sun is 51 degrees, how long is the pole? Let's go ahead and uh, take in the information. Pause the video here. See if you can make the sketch of the situation with all the given quantities and maybe some variable or variables as far as what we're trying to find. So the sketch, we definitely want to include the sun in the sketch. We've got the pole that's tilting away from the sun. Here would be vertical, so there's an eight degree angle as it's tilted away. We've got a flat ground. We've got uh, the shadow length right here on the ground is 20 uh, feet. Uh, and then angle of elevation, which means from the horizontal, elevate to the sun, that one's 51 degrees. So we kind of want to maybe complete a little bit more about our picture, such as, I think we know this angle right here, since this would have been 90, but shut by eight degrees. I think we're gonna, we could say that's 82 degrees, unknown. And then we are trying to find P here. So that one's 82. And then it's probably going to be useful to know this angle as well. So 180 minus the 51 minus the 82. And we're going to get 47. And now we can set up a law of sine situation. P over the sine of 51 degrees is equal to 20 over the sine of 47 degrees. And then we're going to multiply both sides by the sine of 51 degrees. Go ahead and type that into your calculator. Uh, this one being an application problem, probably not going to want to round to two decimal places, something a little bit more appropriate. So something like possibly tenth or even maybe uh, to the nearest foot, but definitely include your units. All right, so case number two is that two sides and an angle opposite one. And this one is the tricky one because it's ambiguous, which means there's a lot of different possibilities for us within that case. So we'll run through all of these. Uh, one thing that's important on some of them is the height of the triangle. And so the way that we're gonna set this up essentially kind of with a key uh, here is we're saying that A, A is your given angle. And then little a would be the side that's opposite of that. And then little b is the other side that's given. So they may not give you this exact combination of letters. If they say capital K, that goes here. Little k goes here. And then if there's some other letter like P, that would go here. So always want to kind of visualize it in terms of our triangles looking like this with our given angle kind of being in the bottom left corner. Uh, the height of the triangle, which as we said, can be uh, relevant, is the uh, other side times the sine of the given angle. So the non-matching letter here times the sine of the given angle. All right, so here are different situations. Okay? Uh, if a is smaller than the height. So in this case, uh, you would need to find the height. And if you find out that the matching letter here, the opposite side, is shorter than the height, you have no triangles. So you make that calculation and then you could just say no triangle or no solution, either one uh, works here as a response. 
the one that does not really happen very often, super slim odds, is if you found out, found the height, and the A was exactly the same as the height, exactly the same. Uh, then it is one triangle, and specifically, it would be a right triangle. If, and this is the one where we actually don't even need the height, if the opposite side, the matching letter, is longer than or the same as the other side, uh, we don't need to know the height in this case, guaranteed one triangle. Here's the kind of the tricky one. Uh, if the opposite side is shorter than the other side, but it is longer than the height, so we had to find the height there, you get two triangles. So we would essentially have the primary triangle being this one, okay? Or we could swing this side in, and the secondary triangle is this one. Remember, they have to have this angle, that side, and that length right there. So that one means we're going to have to have basically find two sets of answers if that's our case. Now, if we're talking about our angle being obtuse, height's not going to matter. Uh, there, it's either going to be no triangles or one. You just have to make sure the opposite side has to be longer than the other. If it's not, you don't have a triangle. No solution. No triangle. Example number five, a two solution case. It's not gonna necessarily tell you that that's the case. We're gonna have to be able to figure that out. All right, so here's our situation again. Here's our given angle, angle M. The matching uh, letter, so this is the side opposite, and then there's the other. So we kind of maybe want to give this a little sketch and kind of see what's going on. something looking like this and then so we're going to compare this to this if this is longer or the same as this it's guaranteed to be a one triangle case we're not going to care about the height but that's not true here it's shorter so we do need to find the height so if this ends up being shorter than the height then we know we have no solutions so remember the height is the other side times the sine of the angle so we'll calculate the height, 32 times the sine of 57 degrees. It's about 26.84. That is longer than the height. So we do have two triangles. This is one of them, and we'll look at the other uh, shortly. So now we're going to go ahead and find angle N. We'll have to name this and find that side then as well. So here's our evidence to support that we do have two triangles. Here's the other one. If we swing this length inside, we had N, we'll call that now N1. Here's point N2. That would be the second triangle. We're going to start by solving the original triangle, the outer triangle. This one would be acute. So we're going to say we're going to go after the angle first. 32 divided by the sine of N1 is equal to 30 divided by the sine of 57. So I would say we might want to cross multiply and say 30 times this equals 32 times this. And then we can divide both sides by 30. We get to there. We want to find the angle. We want to solve for N1. We want to get rid of sine. So to find the angle here, we're going to use inverse trig functions. So we're going to go inverse sine on both sides. So N1 will equal the inverse sine of this. Go ahead and type that into your calculator. Again, typically on these, the book is rounding to two decimal places. So we're going to get, and we might want to even want to label that in our picture, that N1 is about 63.45 degrees. Now we know two angles. We've got the 57 degrees. we got this one. Let's go after the third angle. So 180 minus the 57 minus the measure of angle N1. 
and we're going to get, we call it P. Uh, angle P1 is about 59.55 degrees. That means that the one last thing we're missing is opposite of that angle. So little p or little p1 side length, and we can do law of sines on that one. So little p1 over the sine of the angle p1, which we just found, is back to 30 divided by the sine of 57. We multiply both sides by the sine of 59.55 degrees. We're going to get that little p1 is about 30.84 units. So we've essentially found everything from triangle 1. Now we want to go after triangle 2. So we're going to want to find n2 and p2 and little p2 also. So the way that we're going to start that is really to look at this triangle, which is not a triangle that we're trying to find, but it is a triangle of interest. So notice this was 30 and this was 30. So here we do have an isosceles triangle. And that means that the isosceles triangle theorem applies, whereas when we found this one to be 63.45 degrees, this angle here is also 63.45 degrees. Now that's not the one that we want. We want the one that's right here. And since they do make a straight line, that means they're a linear pair. And there are some, the, some of their measures has to be 180 degrees. So that's going to tell us that angle N2, which is this one, is going to be about 116.55 degrees. And then once again, once we know that one and the 57, go after the little small angle up top, 180 minus 57 minus that one, we get 6.45 degrees. And then little p2 over the sine of that is equal to 30 over the sine of 57 degrees. Multiply both sides by the sine of 6.45 degrees. And you get p, little p2 is about 4.02. And help your teacher out by nicely labeling each of those. My preference is you kind of have like two separate boxes, one per box for uh, triangle one and one for triangle two. Kind of keep those separate instead of having an N1 and an N2 kind of linked up. That's our two triangle case. What about the no solution case? So it says show that there's no solution for uh, this situation. Okay. So there's really a couple ways that it can be done. Uh, we can kind of take a look at the sketch, uh, go after the height. The height would be the sine of uh, the given angle multiplied by the non-matching letter, the other side. We get that's 10.4. And then remember to be a triangle, opposite side, uh, compare it here. We wouldn't need to find the height if this was longer than that or the same as, but it's not, it's shorter. So we did need to find the height. And this is shorter than the height, which means if it's hanging down here and if it's shorter than the height, it's too short to reach down to the base and actually connect and make a triangle. So that would be one evidence. This other piece of evidence we could attempt to do the law of sines, and then you would possibly run into, on your calculator, a domain error uh, because you're trying to put that into and find maybe the angle uh, that we're looking for there, and uh, it's not possible because inverse sine, remember, we can only take inverse sine of values between negative 1 and positive 1. But probably the best way to go after it is find the height here and show that this just is not long enough as it is shorter than our height. Right, so now we're going to shift and find area of triangles. We already know the area of a triangle is one half times base times height. Uh, but what if we didn't necessarily know the base 
and the height. Okay? What if instead uh, we had a side angle side situation where we knew two sides and the angle between them? So we're going to try to connect uh, our picture back to that. So if we're talking about area equals one half times base times height, and in this picture our base would be C and our height would be H. But remember that height, we've come up with a formula, how, a way to find the height. So that's one half times C. And then the height in this situation would be B times the sine of A. And then you can see that this could become this one right here. And it really doesn't matter what the situation is. We can shift it to um, these two and this angle, or these two and this angle. So if we have a side angle side situation, we can just do 1 half times the two sides times the sine of the angle between them. And that can help us uh, find the area of the triangle. So if we have a triangular lot of land where two sides are 575 feet, 720 feet, and we've got an included angle of 81 degrees. So included means between those two sides. So we've got a side angle side situation. So we, our formula could be area is equal to 1 half times the product of the two side lengths times the sine of the included angle. Go ahead and pause here, calculate that. And you get approximately uh, 204,451 square feet. All right, let's assume that this uh, lot of land is in the town of Placerville, and let's assume that lots are selling for $8,000 per acre. How much is this piece of land going to cost? We probably need to know a conversion between feet squared and acres. So maybe that's something we look up or Google, conversion between feet squared and acres. It turns out that it's 43,560 square feet per one acre. So if we divide this by that, we're going to get the number of acres. We get the number of acres, we can then multiply by the price per acre. And we're going to get an approximate price of $37,500. Keep in mind, when you look at real estate prices, they're not going to go down to the nearest dollar. They're going to round for it. So we want to round appropriately. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.